What does it say about the state of, of the league as a whole? I mean, like, you know, it, it, it seems to me the way, like all the messaging around the league is like, it's super positive. We're merging with Brazil. We're doing all this super cool shit. Viewerships, you know, they're lying about the viewership numbers again, misrepresenting, you know, how well it's done through the art of co-streaming, the dark art of the co-streaming numbers. Um, and, you know, they've, they've got this commissioner who is just the fucking mouth of Sauron. You're the best Zimmerman <laughs> who just comes out and just says utter bullshit, utter nonsense like on its face. Like I did a video recently recently talking about they said big ideas come into the league guys we're gonna turn on twitch subs yeah if only you'd done that at the fucking start you would have had an a even bigger ago. war chest yeah you would have had a massive war chest of money and you would have you, developed you literally the left tens of millions of dollars yeah, on that yeah exactly just because you were the the sheer hubris of it because you were like no we're, we're never going to create a division we we want to grow the pie by having everybody watch it for free all of the time yeah how's that working out but anyway the messaging around the league is that everything's great it's in rude health we're merging with brazil even though brazilians are crying about it it's going to be better for the future of the game numbers are up potentials up twitch subs are on and yet people are still wanting to have a fucking brexit on the lcs and you know and, and by the, these orgs are the type that theoretically they need the LCS if they're serious about esports, which of course we know they're not. But I, I, you know, I've heard behind the scenes. Now I'm not as you know juiced in in league as you guys, but I do talk to a lot of owners, a lot of managers, a lot of sources for other stories. Just so happen to work at these orgs and they hear shit from other departments and stuff. And I've heard once again other orgs want out. That it's not just Immortals. It's not just NRG. Like well, it's not just it, League of Legends. Yeah, yes. <laughs> the, these orgs in the LCS, they, 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 they are done. They are done. So manifesto. They want out. They, they, they. It is. It, they're looking at immortals and NRG and going, "You lucky bastards." <laughs> Being mm -hmm. the, that, like, so what? Like, what does that say about the state of where the game's going to be? Like, when are yeah. Riot going to wake well, up to the fact well, that this is not the product it once was, and you are in a terminal death spiral? I want to touch on something quickly, which is like uh, the the confusion and like the the weird like inability to understand where where Mark and I'm not even going to say Mark. I'm just going to say rioters are coming from. Mm. I can say I even felt trapped to this, which is like it's actually really easy to be optimistic and excited when your contract and your salary are like entirely insulated by a multi billion dollar entertainment entity. So like I, I felt that with the Warriors, well, like I was literally my my entire job my job was like locked behind a, a multi billion dollar NBA entertainment conglomerate um, with all the excitement in the world for anything, and they're like it doesn't Sounds matter. Good, right? it, yeah, well, they can they'll say things like it doesn't matter if the worst thing on the planet happens if the the stock market drops 50 percent today, we're still a billion dollar entity and we're just fine and we're gonna we can navigate and we're creative and we've done this before. Oh, it's the same way, right? Like when you when you walk in there and say, "Hey, maybe we should be more forward publicly. Maybe we should talk more about the struggles we're facing as a business. Maybe we should like make this more relatable and understandable to the audience. Maybe that's going to be what helps us find our pathway forward." They're like, "We're Riot. Everything's totally fine." Because like for the for Riot it, it, in a vacuum, or relevant to the teams and the players and all the other things, everything's totally fine. League of Legends makes tons of money. is fantastic. Valorant's super successful. Great. They got a fighting game coming out. Everyone's excited for. Uh, honestly, their expenditures probably went down dramatically because they lopped off like half their MMO team. Across yep. the board, things are fantastic for you know Riot, the multi-billion-dollar entertainment conglomerate. So when you're Mark or you're someone on the LCS and you're working for that group and they say, "Yeah, your contract's fine and everything's going to be okay," it's really easy to get in front of a camera and be like, "Yeah." Mm. It's it's also that cool. <laughs> unfortunately, you know, this this is why developers shouldn't be operating tournaments because there is a there's a mismatch in incentive, right? Mm -hmm. When you have a sports league, the teams are all aligned on the business incentives of making a popular entertainment product. Well, when you the, only have the teams. And yeah, when you only have only. the teams, like you have an American <laughs> sports league. The problem with Riot is that everybody in, inside Riot, so the teams don't actually get to select league leadership. Like Mark Zimmerman is not selected by the teams and the teams have no, sh no, no say in the leadership. And the leadership of Riot Esports is only incentivized 
to help Riot Esports and not help the teams. Like, they don't give a fuck about the team's business, really, if we're being honest. Like, mm -hmm. they will literally give them the bare minimum scraps to keep them involved. Uh, you know, and to they, keep it's themselves not, from getting sued. That was a lot of the them, MG yes. raise was like, we yep. screwed up these negotiations and made a lot of big promises. Right. So yeah. like, here's some money. Sorry. <laughs> right. Um, and, and yeah, I think, I think a lot of this is, it's not that they don't care. I think that team liquid and cloud nine and these names that have legacy and the fans like are there, they do, they don't want the, to get rid of these teams and replace them with fucking team Marn again. You know what I mean? That, yeah. that would obviously be bad for the league. It would be bad for league of legends and it just looks terrible in terms of PR. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, these people within riot esports are incentivized, you know, they are not esports lifers. A lot of these people are trying to climb the corporate ladder to get somewhere else in gaming or riot. They do not care about the esports ecosystem in the long in 10 years, right? They care about doing the best thing they can at, for riot in order to leave esports. They want be a LinkedIn profile to show riot games three years, like the MBS, so, you know, they want all that shit on their LinkedIn, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at look at John Needham. He just took an, an additional job beyond being the co-head of esports into publishing, which is where he comes from, by the way. Yep. So, yep. but it's like, he's not solely responsible for esports anymore. He is getting promoted or, I mean, you, you guys interpret this how you want. He's either getting promoted to do other things at the same time, or Riot is saying esports is not a full-time job anymore because we don't give a fuck. So you mm -hmm. pick which one you think that is, um, could be both. Right. I mean, but look, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe just he's this. just that qualified and capable. <laughs> You know, I'm 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 gonna just say this. This is absolutely <laughs> the 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 future, and there's been swirlings behind the scenes uh, of people saying that this is absolutely happening. Um, Saudi is going to take over the LCS. Yes, I'm Saudi right. is going to take over the LEC. Yep. They are going to run the English language. Uh, yep. uh, they'll uh, take over international events. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah. And they'll they've already got it with the esports World Cup. That's happening, guys. Like I'm pretty much like 95 percent certain that is the future that's mapped out. Because whenever whenever these riot executives talk now, they and, keep flying to Saudi Arabia weirdly too. Why are they all there all the time? It's fucking. I mean, it's it's, it's it's wonderful this time of year, Monty. You've really got to go. You know, get out there. See the sights, nothing, the nothing like a summer in Riyadh, I hear. Yeah, it's really catch, I catch hear a it's local just, beheading. Yeah. Maybe I've a whole layover you know, like, with like Frankfurt. Things. Maybe I've dinner with MBS while you're out there. You know. Yeah, why not? I mean, he is the most, he's list. the most interesting celebrity of all time, according to uh, yeah, League of Legends faker. players. So yeah, fick, yeah. Um, so look, I mean, you know, that that's absolutely where it's going. And, and and another giveaway in all of this, just how far down the pecking order actually the esports product has become, is when you go and look at, like you say, with John Needham, what's his title now? But also when Mark Merrill's flying out to Riyadh, and so again, I know people in these rooms. Um, you know, like he's introduced himself now he thinks he's a tv producer he doesn't think he's got anything to do with games development anything to do with esports he doesn't he, he he as far as he's concerned like arcane is now like it's the, the, you say that like he's coming in like we are the magic yeah. man we are yeah the yeah, dream. yeah. Like, like, <laughs> yeah for real oh, for real dude no, for real like, like, Richard, like, like in the show of succession our tv show of the esports industry obviously when mark merrill walks in the room in saudi suddenly like a like a like a hench guy just goes like uh, Richard, he's in the building. He's he's entered the building now. We've got we've got Mark Merrill yeah. on the on the flank. And I just, uh, I, I just I love, love Merrill, I, I love Mark the Merrill idea of Mark Merrill session. walking into a room, being like, "Did you guys know that I'm the artistic genius who created Yordles?" Yes, like, <laughs> Mark Mark, Mer Mark Merrill watched Succession and didn't understand it was a satire. He thinks it's brilliant. He thinks yeah. it's a, he thinks it's an actual documentary level about how to be successful in business. You know, uh, he and, just you know, plays that theme tune as he's like shaving in the morning, getting yeah. Ready. <laughs> right, so he's 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 going to these meetings now and saying, you know, I'm the guy behind Arcane. Uh, I've got great ties with Netflix. That's not the end of the content. He they Some they're call me make, the Shakespeare of video games. They do. They, yeah. They, they, <laughs> yes. Um, and and that's that's where his attention is. And a lot of Riot executives now have arrived at the conclusion that a lot of the, uh, the orgs that were in the league are, it is better to be a media company. The appetite for video games media has gone up and up and up. The 
the appetite to pay for esports product has gone down and down and down. I mean, like you know, it, we all get, we all arrive back at the same fucking you know starting point. If you can't get the fans to pay for something, then is it a product worth pursuing? And the answer about esports is no. Until the fans want to pay pay per view or watch the big events, want to buy merch, you know, on mass, you know, at, at scale, you know, so it's actually uh, worth it, you know, because I remember all the morons pretending, oh, if Team Liquid had signed Faker. Shirt sales would have paid for the. Uh, you're you're mentally <laughs> ill. Like that 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 is never true. Like the, the compared to an average sports org, merch sales is an infinitely small Thanks. slice of the pie for an esports org. People are not out there. You know, and you won't. You know it yourself. Outside of an esports event, how many jerseys do you realistically see? Like maybe if you walk around Copenhagen, you might see a lot of Astralis jerseys, but that is like not true when you go to a major American city. You know, you will see I mean, like. The answer is one. never in America. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, never. so, so it, it's like everybody knows that the finances on this are broken, but the media aspect of it, absolutely not. In fact, now it's getting it, we're, we're back to the stage we were in 2015, 2016, when you could unlock money for esports. Now, Amazon Prime are looking for programming. Netflix are looking for programming. Other little media companies are looking for programming. There's big YouTube channels. The Russian government are out there funding propaganda videos. You can go get that bag. You can get that bag, Tenet Media. That, that's another podcast. Don't worry about it. But... Um, <laughs> You, you know, the, the the money's out there if you want to make video games adjacent content. Riot realized that. That's the direction they're heading in. And increasingly, they are the, the only people that want to run esports at all is Saudi because they see it as the through road to having a greater amount of control in the Olympics, plus that whole sports washing thing. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.